So it's been over a year since I bought this abandoned catamaran. It was left in an anchorage for 10 years to rot and I'm trying to get it so that I can sail this summer and eventually cross oceans with this very capable ocean going design of a catamaran. The boat actually came with two two stroke engines which I decided to change for four strokes but I decided to get used ones and the amount of work that has been put into them really doesn't justify the cheap price of used engines in this case anyway. They're mechanically all sound now but I've just needed to reinforce them, route my battery cables so I can just turn them on and get them ready for use. I really hope you like uh, jazz and bebop because that's what you're getting this week. <laughs> Alright, enjoy the video, thanks for watching. So last week we made loads of progress with the engines, with this place it's looking super nice, got running water, the engines are mechanically sound and also soon I can start working on splicing my Dyneema and getting all that measured up and this is the sort of annoying job that's in the way. There was some sort of fungus here, thanks for all your comments for you guys who had identified it. So I'm just going to use a bit of vinegar to treat it. I also want to reinforce here as well, put some supports linking the two stringers. But because it sort of takes place in stages, I can work on the engines and mess around with that stuff while this stuff's setting, I think. Once this job's out of the way, then it's like looking at the really fun stuff. And yeah, I'm really hoping to have my mast up in, let's say a month, but like less than a month potentially, because it's really coming together I think but anyway uh, yeah I'll just crack on with this bulk ahead and hopefully I can tick it off the list and move on also this is a really good reason to have a layer of air between your mattress and the, the place that it sits on so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that I might have to get some slats somehow I promise that's not my PP <laughs> Bloody raining. I don't have a jigsaw, so I'll try it with this.
What do you want, buddy? You want more Weetabix? That's your last piece. So that's going to be like one of maybe five stages getting all that bulkhead sorted. The epoxy, I made sure to squeeze it in all of the gaps, but still a lot of work to do on that. Tomorrow, I'm just messing around now with my engine cables. Um, I bought, I think, two meters of a pretty heavy gauge cable. Yeah, I'm going to have to look on YouTube on how to connect these cables. I'm going to have to clip this off and then see how I will join them and then route them through the cabin tops to a battery bank. So these are actually two very different sizes. This is a very, very thick gauge. I'll probably go out at some point and just get some of the correct gauge cable. But I'm still going to look on YouTube tutorials on how to stick them together. So I wanted to have some extra straps which go around the actual beam and not just the cage, just in case anything bad happens. So I've got these as a bit of a backup. I think I will have to put some anti-chafe patches on the beam, maybe stick a flex some metal onto the beam <laughs> just for rubbing. Um, but yeah, I think this is probably just like a, a summer solution. Let's call it that. <laughs> so when I put the engines down, I will pull the blocks and tackle so that it falls down. But then I'll just put a little bit of tension on it as well. So it's not all on the straps and it's not all on the rope with the blocks. <laughs> That's all right. All right, so today I'm gonna to try and get the next part of this done. I'm actually gonna fill this with plywood just so it has more compactability. And then I need to cut a piece which is gonna fit over there and then another generous fillet going down here as well. So uh, hopefully I can get this done quickly enough and then I can get to the shop to buy some wire so then I can start wiring up my engines. So I'm about to enter the zone, the flow, the flow that is necessary to get these jobs done. Bit of acetone just to clean up the dust and I think it's good for adhesion of the epoxy. I don't know, is that true? Entering the zone in three, two, one. Alrighty, pretty happy with uh, most of that, some nice fillets and I finished just in time to go and get some wire for my engine cables so the shop should be open for another hour and a half, give me time to cycle there. I looked online last night at some YouTube videos and apparently the best way to splice wire is using solder so hopefully I can get all that stuff like solder, I've got a soldering iron and all those bits. Uh, should be a nice new skill to be doing. So I've been out to the shop, I've got a lot of wire, solder and all sorts of stuff. But before I splice everything, I want to know exactly how long the cables are going to be. So I'm going to have to route it through the cabin top. I have got, or in fact, Scanstrut sent me cable seals. They actually sent me quite a few of these cable seals that I'll use for routing my cables for my solar panels, uh, all sorts of stuff. Thank you very much Scanstrut. I saw these cable seals for sale at the local chandlery so I thought I would give them an email and thankfully they responded. I need to make a hole in the cabin top and then uh, I'll install this and, and show you how I do that. But this is where it's going to be. The battery that I have now is really big and it's a leisure and starter battery so because it's so big and heavy, I want it quite low down in the boat just to keep the weight at the bottom. I will route the cables through here under the stairs and it, it will go down. Because I'm putting a hole in the cabin top, I'm gonna have to epoxy it. So I'll probably just do the hole tonight, uh, maybe make a start on the wires. I'm gonna drill from the inside first, just so I know exactly where it's gonna be on the outside. Because when you're on the outside, you can't see the stringers and the structure as well. So in between the stringers, so it's quite high up. Same angle as the cabin top. Okay. Always horrible to drill through your boat, 
but uh, always nice to see when the plywood is dry. <laughs> this is the cable seal. I'll actually drill holes in there to fit the cables through, but I'll just for now be using this little template. I'm gonna cut out that hole and then uh, that's where the wires will go through. <laughs> Apparently, if you splay these pieces out, I put these together. This, I don't know if this is going to work, to be honest. I got a, like a liquid flux from the shop. You apply the solder, but not directly from the soldering iron. You have to heat the wire up first and then let the solder dissolve on the wire. Okay, I did what I'm not supposed to do. Oh dear, this is difficult. It seems like the soldering iron is not hot enough. I can't even melt the solder on the soldering iron, so I think I'm gonna have to get a new. Oh, it's melting there. It's not even melting on the soldering iron, really. So, yeah, I don't think this is very good. That is absolutely awful. So I'll just finish this stage off, which is basically sanding it down and then applying fairing compound. Then I'm going to go and get another soldering iron and then try and do some more wiring. It's only a little touch putting this fairing compound in, but once it's all painted, uh, you just won't be able to tell that there's been a repair, I don't think. It just remains to be seen if my repair is going to hold. I know a lot of people had some questions about it, but I think because most of the pressure is coming from like this, it's not a sideways pressure as much. I'm hoping it's going to be all right, uh, but like many things on this refit, I'll just have to keep an eye on it. Uh, that's what this, well, hopefully this summer sale is going to teach me a lot about my repairs and everything that I've done to see if it stands up to the test of time as well, over time, and uh, yeah, whether just stuff will instantly break, which is also a possibility. All right, I'm going to bike now to the DIY shop again and get a soldering iron. I hope it's a soldering iron that wasn't heating the wire up properly. All right, let's try again, but I've actually got a gas powered. Well, it's actually a torch as well as a soldering iron, so maybe that will work a bit better. Yeah, so the solder actually gets pulled inside because it's nice and hot with that little heater. I did melt a bit of the insulation on the on the wire, but I think that's pretty good.
so I think that is much better. I can probably get to the actual splice a bit tighter and better because it's a bit of a ball, but uh, I put an extra piece on there so that I can close the gap fully so there's no gaps from the shrink sleeve in. I think that's all right. I think it can only get better. So the last wire that I need to splice, it was really, really dirty. This is it cleaned up and I've just tried to get as much of the black off the strands. They're all coated in black stuff. It's so difficult to clean. It's the only way I can think to clean it. I've uh, tried like with a cloth and acetone and stuff and uh, it's really difficult. I think I might just, I don't know, give it a try. I've exposed most of the wire, but it looks dodgy. I don't think this is gonna get wet, but it's just whether those dirty wire ends will make a good connection there remains to be seen. So I've drilled a couple of pilot holes and stuck the ceiling foamy thing on and then I'll put the backing plate on then drill holes in the rubber uh, which seals everything and then put the casing on. Ideally you want to freeze this before you drill it uh, but I don't have a freezer so. <laughs> I probably should have cleaned the cabin top. I did clean it around where I stuck it on, but yeah. <laughs> should have cleaned the whole thing really. Although these inside cabin tops are in a bit of a mess to be honest. All right, just gonna crimp on my battery connecting thingies. <laughs> I'm gonna try my port engine first because if one of them's not gonna work, then it's gonna be this one. So I actually read somewhere online that it's not really good to run two engines, especially if they've got little alternators, which these ones do, off the same battery, just because it could overcharge it. I could have this as one engine and leisure, and then I could just have a separate engine battery for the other one. So I'm just gonna spend the rest of the day fettling. Well, I reversed the controls on this one. I, I wanna make sure that these little screws that I've put in are not gonna come out because getting a stuck cable would be pretty catastrophic. <laughs> I'm gonna change the ends over on the steering cable. So the loose ends go at the actual tiller bar. I need to lengthen the cable on this engine because I'm not getting enough revs when I rev it and just loads of little bits and bobs. So I'll just spend the rest of the day doing this and yeah, I'm just gonna fettle, fettle away. <laughs> So I've done quite a few things. Uh, I've got a safety line on my engine, just in case. I've tightened them up as much as possible. 
I should probably drill through them really. I've also lashed the engine in place because there's no way to lock it so it's straight. But since I've done that, there's a lot more vibration coming through and up here and the deck's vibrating and all that. I don't have a controller for this engine, so I've just got a key and I've got all this to deal with. Change this, so that's all good. The only problem is I need a new tiller bar. That's pretty important. This is all rotten. There's even like little termites inside it. I duct taped a splint. Oh, I did a splint on it to get here to the boatyard, but that needs sorting. And obviously the lines need sorting out. Uh, <laughs> part of my summer solution, this, these little straps keep this on the wood so it's at the same height, it doesn't slip down. I think I'll just shorten the fuel pipe as well because that's a bit long. I'm going to have to redo a lot of these decks, I think, uh, and, and lash them down. But yeah, let's see if you can hear the vibration. as bad when I stand on the platform. Yeah, it's not too bad. Also, both engines were charging the battery at 15 volts uh, when they were just in idle. So I will have to uh, get another battery. With the engines charging the batteries, what happens when the battery's full and it just keeps charging and charging it? So, do I need something in between the battery to regulate that charge? Let me know. What do you want? Yeah? Okay, don't eat too much. Give some to the baby. No worries. So my dad hooked up this battery for the sink but I'll give it a try and hope that the engines weren't overcharging because of that bad earth. Could be a possibility. Yeah so I've got that engine running uh, off this smaller battery. I'm just going to check the voltage because this is the one with the bad earth and uh, yeah we'll see. <laughs> Even though one of the engines is overcharging, it's so nice to have those cables routed and I can just turn the engines on at the flick of a button. And uh, yeah, super nice. So yeah, just a couple more hours work and it's finished. <laughs> I'll, I'll just replace the whole cable. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. I don't always do these things where I try and save time and in the end it's just way more of a ball ache. But yeah, I'm gonna have to also reroute the cable through that cable seal. Uh, which is very 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 good quality thank you very much scanstrut i've actually got a little bit of footage backed up as well because uh, i've also been working on my mast uh, the rigging but i couldn't edit a video last week because my computer kept crashing so i've got a new one that should last me another few years the ram was not suitable for the tasks that i was trying to do uh, with these 4k videos uh, but yeah i've got that sorted i'm going to edit this video together now it's just arrived through the post uh, yesterday so thanks so much for watching all your likes and comments uh, let me know what you think uh, go easy on me <laughs> yeah patrons and coffee givers will have seen the progress that I've made on the mast and stuff which I posted uh, on Friday but yeah I'm gonna get this video edited so it's done and then I can continue uh, with the mast and then I'll probably just quickly get this n a new wire put on but yeah thank you so much again for watching and uh, staying tuned hopefully in a few weeks we'll be getting the mast up alrighty see you next week Ha <laughs> ha